Today on Yester Kitchen, if you love tiki bars, we are going to talk all about the history of who to thank. You're going to love it. Let's get started. I'm Jill and this is Yester Kitchen. If you're new here, welcome. It would be an honor to have you join us as we explore retro history through food. Today, I have been waiting to do this one. I am so excited. I'm not even wearing my apron because it's all about tiki bars today. Okay, pop quiz. Who is Ernest Raymond Beaumont Gant? Dun, 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 dun. Give up? Let me tell you about him. In 1933, right after Prohibition, he opened a little bar in Hollywood called Don's Beachcomber Cafe. Oh, we know where we're going, don't we? So prior to opening the bar, he traveled all around the South Pacific and fell in love. I mean, who could not with the palm trees and the gorgeous people and the vibe and just all the tiki's and everything. And he wanted to bring that magic right back to Los Angeles. So he opened up a bar and he called it Don's Beachcomber Cafe, and I'm not sure why he added cafe because it really was just a bar, but he decorated it like crazy with palm trees and statues and waterfalls, and he just made the whole thing like you just stepped into the tropics. His school of thought is that as long as you can't take a vacation, let me bring the vacation to you. And he was also a bartender, so he created these crazy strong tiki drinks and people started noticing and people started coming and pretty soon he was just like the guy. And more than the guy, he truly was the founding father of the tiki culture. He just embraced it, brought it to the public and the public just ate it up. So in 1937, he expanded his bar into a restaurant and changed his name from Don's Beachcomber Cafe or sometimes just Don's Beachcomber to Don the Beachcomber. And it was a full-blown restaurant with strong, strong tiki drinks and Cantonese food. He actually went to China and hired cooks right from China to come to the restaurant so all the food was fabulous and very authentic. Take a look at this restaurant. It was unbelievable. There was no stone left unturned. Every little inch was decorated. The staff was wearing tropical clothes. There were waterfalls inside. The, the patrons that started coming, started coming in tropical clothes. Everybody just got into the magic. So you had the cheeky drinks, you had Cantonese food, you had people just absorbed in the South Pacific culture right in Los Angeles. And it just exploded, absolutely exploded. It exploded so much that he went on to open 16 more restaurants, but that was over time. And he eventually opened a restaurant in Hawaii, which was where his love was. He just loved being in Hawaii. And he actually created an office for himself in a tree house right there. See what I'm, I mean, how can you not love that? His identity really changed to be the restaurant. He started calling himself Don the Beachcomber and eventually he legally changed his name to Don Beach. He was just one amazing man. During World War II, he did do his part, he did go to war, and he even earned a Purple Heart. All oh, but meanwhile, his restaurants were going and people were just loving it. And he just had a gold mine on his hands and people wanted more. I mean, that's, that's where the tiki culture came from, from Don the Beachcomber, from people just stepping into another world as they walked in the front doors and enjoying the drinks. So, he came up with a lot of things that we know today that we have him to thank for. So you know when you go to a Chinese restaurant and they have a poo poo platter? You know a poo poo platter. It's usually a wooden bowl or serving tray and in different areas there's different appetizers with a little tiny fire in the middle so you can like roast a little bit. Don brought that over. It, we would never have poo poo platters without Don Beach. And he brought us so many cocktails that we still love today. And some of these pictures are right from Don the Beachcomber's early, early menu. So he created the zombie, the navy grog, the fog cutter, Tahitian rum punch, and he possibly created the Mai Tai. Now there's a little discrepancy here. About a few years after Don the Beachcomber achieved amazing success, Trader Vicks came onto the scene, which was another, that was like a copycat of Don the Beachcomber, but you know, the same vibe. And they, the, the story is that Don the Beachcomber had a drink called the QB Cooler. And the exact drink showed up on Trader Vicks menu as the Mai Tai, but it was the exact drink. There was a court battle 
And I guess Trader Vic's won out because if you go to any stores, you can buy the Mai Tai mix under the Trader Vic's name, which I'm not sure how that happened. But one day we'll make Mai Tai and you won't have to worry about it because you can make it on your own. Okay, let me talk to my Disneyland friends. One of my childhood favorite, favorite ride memories to this day is the Enchanted Tiki Room. I, I love it. I know you know it. The Tiki Room, 100% inspired by Down the Beachcomber. And if you've ever been to the Disneyland Hotel and you went to a bar called Trader Sam's, which is over the top Polynesian, you know, they have rainstorms in there, they have jungle music. Oh, it's, it's unbelievable. That too is inspired by Don the Beachcomber. In addition, the Dole Whip, the beloved Dole Whip that they serve right outside of the Enchanted Tiki Room, Don the Beachcomber. So he just had such a huge impression on, the, on our culture. He just brought us tiki culture. He brought us happiness. He brought us paradise. And he brought us food. And today, we are gonna make straight from his menu. You've seen it in other episodes. This is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite books, The Four Treasury. It's from 1949. It's, as you can see, I have so many tabs. I've done some episodes. I have more episodes to do. Cantonese Hawaiian barbecue ribs. Don the Beachcomber. And literally, this is from 1949. So he submitted the recipe to the book, thank goodness, so we can make it. So I've got my oven on to 325. And I have some gorgeous ribs. Let me show you. These beautiful things have been marinating. Oh, look at that. For about three hours. Don't worry, I'm gonna catch you up right now. Could not be easier. Here's what you wanna do to marinate the ribs. I have a giant <laughs> measuring cup because it's just so much easier to pour. And into that goes one half cup of soy sauce, one clove of garlic. It doesn't have to be super minced. It just needs to be chopped. Mine, I just happen to enjoy my mincer. One inch cube of ginger yields about between one and one half tablespoon. So if you wanna go that route, you can go that route. There you go. We need a teaspoon of salt. We need a half a cup of ketchup because you gotta get that beautiful red color and tomato flavor. Now. Don't worry, this is the 40s. We need three quarters cup of sugar because this is a sweet rib. And last but not least, we need two ounces of sherry, which is also four tablespoons or a quarter cup, however you want to call it. In it goes. And all we're gonna do is just kind of mix that around really, really well. Here I have one beautiful rack of baby back ribs. Yes, they need to be baby back ribs because remember, these are gonna be appetizers, so you want little guys. And this sauce will probably cover two or three racks. I'm just using one for demonstration purposes. And all you're gonna do, oh, you are gonna take this glorious mixture and pour it right over your ribs. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Now all you're gonna do is leave this alone in the fridge for three hours. Every, maybe every half hour you can come and turn it so all sides are coated and marinated, but you wanna stay in it for three hours and then we'll be back to cook them. Okay, so that was it, easy, right? So here we are three hours later and I just wanted to mention really quick, the chains, you know, they started closing and there is one called Don the Beachcomber in Hawaii, but I went and looked at it online and I looked at the menu they have tacos, they have buffalo chicken. It's not Don the Beachcomber. So I'm gonna say that Don the Beachcomber officially is a long lost restaurant living in the hearts and memories of millions of people, including myself. I got to go when I was a little girl with my daddy and oh, it was magical. Actually, I think I've been a couple times to the one in um, one Los Angeles, magical. I hope you do too. If you've been to Don the Beachcomber and have memories, you know you gotta share it with me down below. Okay, let's get to our ribs. So here are our gorgeous, gorgeous ribs. They're gonna go in the oven for 45 minutes. I'm not gonna say Don, cause he didn't write it. The cook who gave the recipe said to use the marinade and baste it while it's cooking. So here's the thing. Don't just take your marinade right out of the ribs and baste your cooking ribs because you know it could have bacteria. So you really wanna be safe. So what I did, I took my marinade and I put it in a little tiny cute little pot and I brought it to a full boil and I let it boil for, now be careful because it may boil all over. So I brought it to a full boil and let it boil for a couple minutes. 
Then I brought it down. So now any bacteria is kind of killed off. So now I can baste my ribs. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick it in my very 1970s oven for 45 minutes and baste them maybe about every 10 minutes. In your pan, you wanna have a little bit of water. I've got a little bit of water, just enough to cover the bottom because that's gonna keep the steam coming up and it's gonna keep your ribs moist. I also have it on a rack, which I spray with cooking spray. And then I put my ribs on and we'll be back when we have Don the Beachcomber Hawaiian Cantonese barbecued ribs. I know they're not on a barbecue when they're in an oven, but that's how they did it. And that's how we're gonna do it. I'll see you in a few minutes. So it's been 45 minutes. Take a look. Are these gorgeous? They are exactly what you want. They're not, they're not super red like in the Chinese restaurants. But they're sweet, they're sticky, they're gingery, they're garlicky, and they were baked in the oven. And Russ, I hope you forgive me. <laughs> Russ is my friend. He has a channel called Smoky Ribs Barbecue, and if you've ever seen him, you'd know. If you haven't, go check him out. The man knows barbecue. He has so much equipment. He's pretty amazing. So I'm gonna put his link down below. Hi Russ, thank you so much for just being such an awesome guy. So forgive me for the oven barbecue. So let's cut into these things. Oh man, they're just absolutely, well, you gotta find the bone. There we go. And, and by the way, these are not dinner. These are actually on the appetizer menu at Down the Beachcomber on their poo poo platter. And that's why you just want, well, this is good. Are you ready for this? Are you ready? Are you gonna die? Look at this. Oh my goodness. I can't stand it. So we're just gonna put a couple little ribs right in our Polynesian dish. And appetizers for dinner is served. We have Don Beach to thank, who by the way sadly passed away in 1989 at 82. But what a legacy he left. Literally, tiki culture is only here. I mean, it maybe would have come around, but I don't know if it would have come around in the same style. Tiki culture is with us because of him. So Don, this is for you. Thank you so much for the massive contribution you gave to our country. So I hope you make these ribs and I hope you make a strong tiki drink to go with it. You might as well celebrate tiki. It's just fabulous. If you would like to explore more dishes from your childhood or just the past, I invite you to subscribe. I release new videos every week. In the meantime, there is some more retro dishes for you. And remember, every dish, even oh, Hawaiian, Chinese, barbecued ribs from Don the Beachcomber, literally has a story. I'll see you in the next video.